This is one of the last great habitats along the Texas coast. It was a ranch of many seasons. It will be preserved forever now. I never get tired of coming here. You don't see a lot of native coastal prairie anymore. Yeah, the powder horn, you know, the name is just so evocative and the place lives up to it, you know, from the sprawling live oaks to the miles of frontage along Matagorda Bay and the bountiful fish and game and water birds and waterfowl and redfish and trout. It's just absolutely magical. It's a sportsman's paradise and something that every outdoors enthusiast can enjoy. You know, people care passionately about their coast um, and they want to see it conserved, but they also want to have access to it. And so as we think about conserving what makes our coastal heritage and lands and waters so special, but also being able to provide managed access for fishing and hunting and canoeing and kayaking and bird watching and hiking and nature viewing is just a, an extraordinary opportunity. And the Powderhorn offers that like no other. The Powderhorn Ranch has been the dream of the conservation community for almost a quarter of a century. And everybody has recognized its scale, its incredible ecological integrity and biological uniqueness. And really fish and wildlife biologists have thought of it as one of the last great places along the coast. And this adds to a big network and complex of lands that are already protected for conservation as part of the Aransas National Wildlife Refuge and Matagorda Island. And it's, it's kind of the hole in the donut. What a rich history that the Powderhorn provides in our state, really from the time of Native Americans that were hunting and fishing and living on the banks of Matagorda Bay, all the way up to the earliest European settlers that came ashore in and around this area, to uh, the German settlers that came by there and landed the historic ports that were established near there, and of course the ranching heritage in the area and the Denman family that ranched Powderhorn for almost a century. My husband's family, his grandfather, Judge Denman, sat on the Supreme Court of Texas. He bought the Powderhorn Ranch with his son, Leroy Denman, so it came into the hands of my husband, Leroy Denman, Jr to ranch for some 65 years. And it was simply a love affair to encourage and to grow and to make better what he had been asked to oversee. How grateful Leroy would be if he were alive today. He wanted very much to pass it on, leaving land for the future. We've been ranching since the 80s, and we came to the Powderhorn about 12 years ago. What a, what a treasure. If you love your job, it's not work. And that's the way we feel about the ranch. Great place to raise kids and, and a family. Well, you always worry about development of a place like this. And I know from experience, from being here, when people have come to look at it, to uh, build plants and industry on it. And so that was my biggest worry, is, you know, it go to development instead of staying like this. You know, it's just preserving what's here. I think that's a, just a win for everyone. So we're trying to restore this property back to a native prairie state. This should be a tall grass prairie that's gonna have a diverse plant community. 
and in turn that plant community is going to support a diverse uh, bird community. Powderhorn is a unique place because it hasn't been divided into smaller ranches. It's still an intact tract of native tall grass prairie. There's less than 5% of tall grass prairie left in the United States. A lot of the areas are built up in homes, uh, industry, farmland, rangeland, and you don't see a lot of just open native grassland. Obviously, this running live oak is too thick for animals to utilize. In the absence of fire, the running live oak has grown up into these thick moths. Our intent is to use herbicide and prescribed fire to knock it back and get back to a native prairie state. So birds are going to be the main animal that's going to benefit from this restoration. Uh, a lot of imperiled birds, like grassland nesting birds, but also uh, Oplomato falcons and whooping cranes are going to benefit from this restoration. The majority of this property is going to be a wildlife management area where we'll be able to do habitat management, have public hunts, but the, the, most of the time it's going to be an outdoor research laboratory. Uh, the state park is going to cater more towards uh, the daily use visitors that come out, uh, maybe camp. There will be access to shoreline fishing, uh, walking trails, hiking trails, biking trails. Right now, we are designing research studies, uh, setting up public hunt programs, and getting, overall getting ready to where the public can come out and enjoy this property. We couldn't have done the Powderhorn Ranch project without the Texas Parks and Wildlife Foundation. This is a very entrepreneurial, innovative, public-private partnership. Really the, the precedent for the future. Certainly a public entity couldn't do this by itself. Thanks to the extraordinary efforts of the Parks and Wildlife Foundation who put together this public-private partnership with huge seed funding from the National Fish and Wildlife Foundations, the Nature Conservancy and the Conservation Fund who were able to help put the deal together and many donations from a wide variety of donors, big and small, we were able to see this dream realized. I sang Oh, I thank the Texas Parks and Wildlife and those private sector donors that have been so gracious to make this possible. We have a lot of work to do ahead of us, but it's good work, it's rewarding work, and it's gonna help chart the course for what undoubtedly is gonna be one of the most iconic and flagship properties within the state's public land system. These are the proverbial trees that we're planting so that somebody else can enjoy their shade. Uh, and if we wouldn't take these kind of risks, we wouldn't have any more state parks for our growing public to enjoy. Matterhorn is going to be one of those places that we look back on for generations to come and we're going to thank goodness that we had the courage and the foresight to acquire this place. Mm -hmm.